Let's do the giveaway. I have copied my YouTube video link over here. I will paste it. It will randomly pick a comment, get YouTube comments. All right, let's start. Okay, and the winner is Pankaj. All right, so he's gonna be, <laughs> he, comment, he commented, I would be so glad to receive that $50 gift card. All right, Pankaj, you are the winner. All right, I'll contact you automatically. Holy sh I don't know what's going on with Apple, but at this event, it was actually spring loaded. It feels like they're giving out too much. In this event, we got Apple Card family, new podcast subscription for channels, purple iPhone 12, AirTags, yes, we finally got AirTags, Apple TV, iMac, and finally iPad Pro. So I will talk about the iPad Pro and the iMacs at the end of the video because I got a lot of thoughts and they're super important. Okay, I know you don't care about the Apple Card family, but it helps you improve your credit score. And another subscription, like not podcast subscription, but channel subscription, which anywhere that subscription words comes in, I just hate it. I cannot deal with any other subscriptions. But let's talk about that sweet iPhone 12 color. That sweet purplish iPhone 12 and 12 mini are seriously looking really good. I mean, like I didn't expect this at all. And I thought that Apple would launch the spring color cases for iPhones as they were rumored, but it didn't happen. Instead, they gave us beautiful purple colored iPhone 12 and 12 mini that you can pre-order on April 23rd and they will start to ship on April 30th. If you're looking to buy one, this is your time. We finally got the air tags after leaking for I don't know how long, but I think even Apple knew that it has been leaking forever. So it felt like in their event, they kind of rushed through it. John Prosser leaked everything about AirTag, including the AirTag accessories. Apple just showed a video and they told us the basics that it's a tracking device that can locate your stuff with precision finding using your Find My app. You just need to make sure that your iPhone has Apple's U1 ultra wide band chip in order for these to work. So it will work with iPhone 11 or later if you have that. AirTag is a new product and Apple didn't even take the time to tell us about the battery life that it has. But I will tell you, AirTags can last you about a year and you can replace the batteries yourself as it takes the CR2032 coin cell battery to operate. I think the time constraint of the event was the reason that Apple conveniently left out the prices of their AirTags accessories from the event. AirTags themselves start at an amazing price of $29 and a pack of four is just $99, which is amazing price, right? Hold on. AirTags accessories, they start at $29 too. And don't even get me started on the Hermes edition one. It starts, <laughs> it starts at $349. For comparison, the Apple Watch SE starts at $309. So you can decide. Okay, leave the Hermes one on the side and let's calculate the actual price of the AirTags. Okay, let's see. So if you wanna buy the pack of four, it's gonna be $99, okay? So we have 99 over here. Now let's say that you wanna buy the cheapest AirTags accessories. Let's say that you wanna buy two keyrings. Those are $35 each, so it comes to be 70, perfect. And now let's say you wanna buy two, not the leather ones, but the cheaper loops that are $29 each and which comes out to be 58. Let's do 58. The total cost for owning four AirTags is $217. I'll let you sit on that. Cool. Again, classic Apple. Create a problem and sell a solution. For reference, you can buy the Apple's Apple Watch 3 right now for $199. Okay, so enough about the AirTags. I think I spoke more about the AirTags than Apple in their own event. Let's talk about Apple TV. As I said in my previous video that Apple might come out with a new remote and we got a new remote. It will have the touch sensitive circular gesture button just like we had it in the AirPods back in the days. And the Siri button is relocated on the side, which is great. And I also really like how Apple put the older H12 Bionic chip in their Apple TV, which was launched in iPhone XS. Anyone remembers iPhone XS? <laughs> There's a bunch of good stuff with Apple TV, like it can play now HDR content at higher frame rate. There's also a color balance feature, which you can use to adjust your TV settings to get the best possible picture setting. And it works by just pointing your iPhone at the screen and your TV will automatically color correct it. To be honest, I think this is one of the futuristic features and it looks really cool. The new Apple TV starts at $179 for 32 gigs and $199 for 64 gigs. And you can pre-order it on 30th of April and it will be available in the second half of May. Okay, now let's talk about the big announcement. First, iPad Pro. So Apple starts the event with a guy stealing the M1 chip and installing it to the iPad. And the big reveal in that scene was, it was Tim Cook all along. <laughs> I really like when trillion dollar companies like to have fun. Speaking of fun, have you heard that you're your own competition? 
I think Apple is taking that too seriously. MKBHD tweeted that iPad Pro was already a mile and a half ahead of every other tablet in performance. M1 iPad Pro is going to be unreal. And minutes after he tweets that, what is a computer? I mean, Apple is just not stopping, not even they are pausing anytime soon. They really want to convince everyone that iPads are the new computer. And I think they really don't want to sell their own MacBooks. That's why they are putting all this power to an iPad. <laughs> Along with M1, Apple is also giving 5G connectivity to the iPad Pros. There is a really cool feature that is coming to the front cameras of the iPad Pros and it's called center stage. The iPad Pro will have ultra wide front facing camera, which will help you during the FaceTime like the front facing camera can follow you wherever you go using the face detection and you don't even have to move your iPad. It will conveniently zoom in or out depending on if there are multiple people in the shot. That was really good. But the biggest headlining feature that is coming to the bigger iPad, the 12.9 inch one, is the Liquid Retina XDR display. This display is going to be the same quality as the Apple's super expensive Pro XDR display. Apple mentions on how they have re-engineered the display and are now using 10,000 mini LEDs instead of 72 LEDs in the previous models. It has 2,500 local dimming zones to precisely adjust the brightness of the content that is being displayed on the screen. So it means that it will be really similar to OLED, but I think we have to look at it in person to really know the difference. Despite all the advances, the iPad Pro is gonna start at 799 for the 11 inch and 1099 for the 12.9 inch. Also, now you can order a two terabyte version of iPads. It's not gonna be cheap, but you can do it. Okay, let's talk about those colored iMacs. I mean, I don't wanna say them iMacs because it more looks like an iPad is attached to a stand. <laughs> it's unbelievably thin. So this is the first device that Apple built from ground up for the M1 chips and it looks stunning for the most part. To be honest, from the back and the sides, it just looks beautiful and marvelous. But the most important part is going to be the front where we're gonna spend our most of the time and honestly, I'm hugely disappointed. I mean, look at that chin, like, what is that? Like. <laughs> why? Apple has amazing engineering team and they make amazing products, but why do you want that chin? And adding to that, look at those white bezels. Those are huge. Those are still huge. Look at your Pro XDR display. I know it's expensive, but I know Apple can make less bezel than that. And despite that huge bezel, there's a 1080p FaceTime HD camera. They couldn't even go 4K in 2021. I think their main focus was to make it as thin as possible. To be precise, it's 11.5 millimeters without thinking that what people might be actually looking at. It has already took Apple 11 years to get a major redesign and they landed here. I mean, I'm not gonna be looking at the sides or how thin it is. I want complete screen, like bezel-less, chinless screen. That is what's gonna be exciting to me, but it is what it is. Let's talk about the good part. It has a 4.5K retina display with P3 white color gamut, four USB-C or two Thunderbolt ports, depending on the configuration you get, and it can get 500 nits of maximum brightness. Also, they redesigned the Magic Keyboard. If you pay a little bit extra, you will get the Magic Keyboard with the Touch ID. The keyboard, the mouse, and the cables that comes with it matches the colors of your computer. The cable connect to the computer magnetically, and it's a braided one. It looks really good quality. Another good part is that they gave the Ethernet cable connection through the adapter. But coming back to the keyboard, all that good stuff, yet Apple has to do something very apple -y. The keyboard that it comes with doesn't have the backlight. I mean, backlight is really important, especially for me. And I know there are a lot of people like me who likes to work in dark and you know, we cannot do like, oh. Let's talk about some other good stuff that Apple has finally upgraded their FaceTime HD camera to 1080p. I know it's not gonna be the best, but it's still better than the crap they have been shipping in their laptops for years. It will use the computational video using the M1's power to enhance the video quality and it will make you look like a rock star. <laughs> iMac has also upgraded their mics and audio system for better audio quality and speakers for you to listen and watch movies. The orders for the iMac starts on April 30th and they will be available in the second half of May. The base configuration is gonna be $12.99 but it will only have two Thunderbolt ports and come with the Magic Keyboard without the Touch ID. So if you want to get four ports and the Magic Keyboard with the Touch ID, you just have to pay $200 extra and go for the $14.99 model. So that was everything that Apple launched in their April 20 event. It was a lot of stuff but there were some good things, some bad things. Overall, it was good. 
all right thank you so much for watching this video if you like this video make sure you hit that like button subscribe to the channel because subscribing really helps and it motivates me to make more videos for you guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one take care